uh, Dr. Sangeeta. Dr. Sangeeta Khanna, again, a very frequent um, expert for our neuro ophthalmology uh, sessions at the INOS. She's a clinical professor of ophthalmology and visual sciences at the Kellogg's Eye Center, Michigan University. Uh, she would be talking to us about optic neuritis, uh, adult versus pediatric. Welcome, Dr. Sangeeta. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. And um, I, um, uh, some of you have uh, I've met recently. So thank you again. Um, this is a pleasure. So um, I just want to uh, take, I'll, I'll put on the timer so that I don't go over, but I'm keeping it short and brief. Um, so uh, the main, sorry, one second, it's not advancing. Okay. So what I want to talk about is our approach to adult optic neuritis and kind of highlight a few differences between adult and pediatric optic neuritis. So let's begin with what is typical optic neuritis, because that's what we want to do with adult optic neuritis. Is this typical or atypical? So a typical would be a, a, a woman in the age range of 20 to 50, uh, but males can also have it, but less common. And it's an acute and subacute or subacute onset of vision loss, uh, and uni it's unilateral. Uh, and the vision can fall over seven to 10 days before stability. Uh, and it's often pa painful. Um, and there's be pain on eye movements, and they will have decreased visual function and APD and a mild disc edema. That's the classic uh, typical optic neuritis. And um, uh, when we think of typical optic neuritis, we are thinking either an isolated optic neuritis, uh, which is post-infectious or post-vaccination, or um, associated with MS. Either they are, don't completely have a full diagnosis of MS at that time, but may have a white matter or demyelination. So that could be a clinically isolated syndrome uh, or uh, dissemination in space and time, meeting the McDonald criteria for multiple sclerosis. Uh, but atypical optic neuritis uh, is different because it's associated with specific autoimmune mediated pathology. And it's important to know about these and, uh, it, and diagnose them at the time because the intervention is different. Uh, there, there is also other conditions uh, such as um, sarcoidosis and autoimmune conditions, which can cause atypical optic neuritis, but less commonly. And then uh, it's good to know about a chronic uh, relapsing inflammatory optic neuropathy is a type of uh, optic neuritis, which is steroid dependent, but uh, has no uh, markers. So uh, aquaporin-4 IgG, uh, that is the uh, NMO antibody. So that is uh, just to review, it is a cell surface, uh, cell surface antigen on astrocyte uh, foot-like processes. So here, these are the uh, astrocytes uh, foot processes and antibodies form to this in this in neuromyelitis optica. And uh, the clinical features of aquaporin-4 optic neuritis, which one of the atypical optic neuritis is that one, it's an eye pain is not very frequent. It's often bilateral. So if it's a bilateral optic neuritis, um, you want to definitely uh, work up for this. Vision is much worsely affected and the outcome is poor and recurrences are frequent. So they need to have preventative therapy. Um, and other symptoms, they may have area pastrema involvement. So vomiting and hiccups, myelitis, which is often uh, longitudinally extensive in these patients. Uh, and that is important to uh, keep as a diagnostic criteria. And uh, when you do an MRI, it can give you um, MRI orbit can tell you if it is uh, fe more features of uh, atypical optic neuritis, such as an aquaporin-4, you'll see long segment involvement and uh, like a large portion of the optic nerve. In addition, there is a more of a chiasmal involvement in these patients. So the, this is a pre-chiasmal segment in a patient with aquaporin-4 positive disease. A MOG uh, antibody is myelin oligodendrocyte glycoprotein. It's again a cell surface antigen, uh, and this is present uh, on the uh, here on the oligodendrocyte. 
uh, and um, antibodies form to this, and so that causes mog associated disease. And with this, they often have eye pain. Again, bilateral uh, disease is common. Discodema is profound. Vision can be very severe, but outcome is much better than aquaporin 4, atypical optic neuritis. Recurrences are frequent. Uh, and uh, on MRI orbit, again, you have a long segment. A disease with perineuritis. They kind of a spill over in the fat, orbital fat. Um, so um, uh, let, let's just look at two cases, uh, a 24 year old with no past medical history, subacute decline in vision of the right eye with pain on eye movements for one week. Uh, and uh, the vision is down in that right eye. There's an APD, there's a central scotoma, uh, it's unilateral, she's young, she has pain on eye movements. Um, so um, uh, you, you want to uh, you want to go ahead and um, consider um, the differential diagnosis of optic neuritis, possibly typical. So let's get an MRI. Uh, an MRI uh, orbit will uh, will show you shows you the enhancement of the optic nerve. Uh, this is the coronal and the axial. Um, and um, um, remember here that uh, not if you suspect clinically optic neuritis, not all patients may show enhancement. Some may show just signal change. So keep that in mind when you diagnose optic neuritis. And you'd get an MRI brain. It shows white matter hyperintensities on flare imaging as seen here. So this is a patient um, you, you, who fits in the uh, at least the clinically isolated syndrome, has demyelinating lesions in the brain and um, has optic neuritis. Uh, so, uh, and is in the typical, it's a typical presentation. So looking at a case two, um, this is a 56 year old, so outside your normal range for typical with pain, uh, but it was a painful decrease in vision in the, just in the one eye, 2200. Uh, and um, th this is the appearance of the optic nerves, uh, very mild edema. Um, uh, and uh, when you do the MRI, uh, though the clinical features, there was one atypical feature of age, but the rest was unilateral painful. Uh, when you do the MRI orbit, it shows you it's a long length with the spillover in the fat. So that's an atypical, um, that's a second atypical feature. And this patient, the uh, case one was typical, case two is atypical, as you see, two atypical features. And she uh, had MOG antibody positive. This is the MOG um, uh, cell-based assay and positive as one in thousand. So uh, why is it important to distinguish the two? Because they, their treatment is different and the prognosis is different. Um, and the uh, treatment plan for typical, uh, we uh, get it from this very um, um, well, well done study, the Optic Neuritis Treatment Trial published first in 1992. And um, it involved 487 patients uh, with typical optic neuritis and uh, were, had their three arms, uh, one with oral prednisone at one milligram per kilogram per day for 14 days, a placebo arm and an IV solimedrol or methylprednisone uh, one gram daily uh, for uh, three days. So uh, what they found was th that uh, with the oral prednisone at this dose, um, there was increased recurrence. So we don't want to use that, um, but there was no difference in the uh, placebo and the um, uh, the placebo and the um, IV methyl prednisone arms in terms of visual recovery uh, at at the final endpoint. So uh, when you have atypical optic neuritis, however, uh, th there are differences. You have to give them IV uh, IV methyl prednisone. There is no role of observation in those cases. And uh, they may also need additional plasma exchange if their vision does not improve. Uh, and that decision can be made uh, based on uh, how their vision is improving or uh, what is the concern for neuromyelitis optica. Because if it's aquaporin 4 disease, you want to do early initiation of plasma exchange. IVIG can also be used um, for um, assisting in patients who do not respond to steroids. 
In addition to this, we need long-term relapse prevention in both patients who have aquaporin uh, for disease and in some patients who have MAG positive disease. So in our case one, which was typical optic neuritis, uh, she actually chose to uh, get treated with prednisone. Um, uh, IV methylprednisone would be uh, what you would give her. Uh, we did give her an equivalent oral dose of prednisone at 1250 milligram. We did uh, remember, even though we gave uh, the, we used oral prednisone, we did not give 70 milligrams, which is contraindicated. We could have offered her observation, and that would be absolutely fine. Um, case two is atypical. So she uh, got IV methylprednisone for three days. She actually recovered well, had a, a slow, longer taper of oral prednisone, and then she relapsed. So she was started on rituximab. So um, uh, in addition to treatment information, uh, this trial also gives us prognosis for multiple sclerosis. What they found uh, in, is in this graph that you can see that if the patient has more than uh, one lesion on, on, uh, on the MRI, one a white matter lesion, they have higher risk of developing multiple sclerosis. And that risk at 15 years is 72% versus 25% if they have a normal MRI. Uh, so that's something uh, with typical optic neuritis, um, you prognosticate for multiple sclerosis. So I'm just going to end with this slide. This slide uh, summarizes the differences between pediatric and adult optic neuritis. Um, and uh, the main uh, things to pay attention to is uh, the in children, they, they often present without pain and they have more disc edema. And the disease can be bilateral or unilateral. So uh, keep that in mind um, the, that they may not complain of pain. And um, there, we don't have the ONTT uh, for children because they enrolled 18 plus, but uh, the treatment is drawn from ONTT. Uh, also, um, there is more use of IVIG in children, uh, especially if they are MAG positive. And um, note that uh, they, the children, the same criteria have applied uh, in the uh, case observation series that higher age and more than one lesion, uh, uh, a demonetic white matter lesion, does increase the odds of MS just as in adults. However, the overall risk of multiple sclerosis in pediatric optic neuritis is lower than adult. Uh, more uh, children have MAG positive disease, so always check for uh, MAG and uh, neuromyelitis optica antigen, the aquaporin for uh, antigen as well the antibodies to that antigen. Um, and um, I'm, uh, I'll end here, any questions? Uh, thank